Today we are going to be solving equations involving multiplying. So let's take a look at our first problem and then the directions ask us to solve each equation and we're going to also check our answer. And so we see that s is being divided by 6 and that's, that equals the quotient of this is 7. And so what we're going to end up doing is an opposite operation. Again, this symbol here, this fraction bar represents division. So we're going to do the opposite of that division. So what's the opposite division? Well, if you said multiplication, you are correct. And that's what we're going to end up doing. We're going to multiply by 6. And if you think of it as a fraction, like 6 over 1, you can see how these 6's are going to cross cancel. We're going to do the same thing on this side. And so we're left with S is 42. We'll just go ahead and check your answer. Put the 42 back in for S and see if it does equal 7 when we divide by 6. Yes, it does. 7 equals 7. It checks out, so S is 42. So the same thing here. You're just going to multiply, and that way we can go ahead and cancel out the 5s. Because again, V divided by 5, the opposite of that is to multiply. So you do it on both sides, and we're left with V equals 45. Well, let's check our answer. We're going to substitute this 45 back in for this V and evaluate so we go ahead and do that work. 45 divided by 9, or 5, is 9. So 9 equals 9, so yes, we have the right answer. Well, I'll check on the next one. This time it's a little different because the Q divided by 7 is on the right-hand side of this equation. So we're going to do the same thing, though. It's division, so the opposite division is to multiply. So we're left with 84 equals Q. Well, you could find out if that's right by substituting the 84 back in for Q in the original equation. Divide by 7, you get 12. 12 equals 12. It checks off, so we know 84 is the right answer. So right here, again, this is division, so we're going to do the opposite division. We're going to multiply to cancel out those 2s. So when we go ahead and multiply the 16 by 2, we end up with 32. That is our answer. Last one of this type, here we've got x divided by 3, the opposite of division is to multiply again, so we're going to multiply those two numbers, and we end up at 78. If we check the division, 26 equals 78 divided by 3, well 78, 3 goes in there, we have 26 times, so yes, that does check off, so we know we have the right answer. Same thing over here, if I put 32 in for the m divided by 2, I end up with 16. 16 equals 16, so I knew I was right with saying m is 32. Well, the next few problems, we're going to end up having to write some problems that involve multiplying to come up with answers. So let's take a look at our first problem here. All the seats in a theater are divided into six groups. Okay, they just told us they're dividing the total number of seats, all the seats, this is the total number, are being divided, divided by six groups. So another way to write that is total, total over six. That's this division sign is more practical when we're dealing with writing equations. We're going to write with the fraction bar rather than this symbol up here. So we have the total divided by six. That's what the problem says. There are, there are means like equals equals 35. So we have 35 seats in each group. Using a variable s to write, uh, write and solve an equation to find out how many seats, how many seats, the total number of seats. So we're going to use s over 6 equals 35. So we're just going to go ahead and solve that by doing an opposite operation. We're going to multiply by 6 by both sides and by 6, and we end up with S equals 210 seats. That is our answer. Looking at the next one, there are 16 ounces in one pound. A box of nails weighs 4 pounds. Using a variable W, we're going to write and solve a division equation to find out how many, how many ounces the box weighs. So we have the total number of ounces. We don't know what that is. Again, this is the total number of ounces divided by 16 ounces in one pound. So if we divide by the number 16, that'll tell us how many pounds we have. Well, it tells us the total number of pounds. The weight of the nails is 4 pounds, so it equals 4. So we're going to just solve a division problem by 
or solve this problem by doing an opposite operation. We're going to multiply by 16 on both sides. So the dot represents multiplying, so we're left with w equals, this makes 64. So 64, and then we are in ounces, OZ. Well, looking at our next problem, it says there are three tennis balls in each can. Three tennis balls in each can. And then it says that the total number is 27 tennis balls. Total. Well, every time we're putting the total on top. So remember, our formula is going this way. Total over a number that is in each can, or number that we are end up dividing by to find out the other values. So let's take a look at what we've got here. It says write and solve a division equation to using the variable C. Now what's C going to represent? To find out how many cans the coach bought. So we have the total number of tennis balls. So the total number of tennis balls, this time we know the total number is 27. Divided by the number of cans, so C, equals the number of balls in a can. Well, right here, three tennis balls in each can. So there's our equation. Let's go ahead and put the total number of balls in there. 27 over C equals 3. This is a little different problem here. It's got a couple steps here. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up multiplying by C on both sides to cancel out the C's. Now we have 27 equals 3C. Well, to solve this one, we're going to end up dividing by 3, kind of what we did yesterday. And we end up with 9 tennis balls. 9 equals C. The other way to come about that answer is to go with 27, the total number of balls, divided by 9, or divided by 3, number of balls in each can, will give us the number of cans altogether, 9 cans. So that's another way to come up with that answer. Last problem here talks about how all of the students in Tim's class are divided. All of the students. Okay, that is a total. We're thinking of what that total is because we're going to be given a total and we're dividing by a number of parts. Are divided into. That tells us right now we've got the total is being divided into four teams of six students. Of means this is what we're going to end up equaling here. So equals six students. So we're supposed to write an equation using the variable s to write the total number of students. Well, here's our total number right here. So s is going to go right in for the total. So it's s over 4 equals 6. So we're going to go ahead and do an opposite operation here. We're multiplying by 4 on both sides, and that'll cancel out the 4s. On the left-hand side, leaving us with s equals 24. So 24 students are in the class. So there is our answer. Well, those are the types of problems you'll see on 10 nights homework. Good luck.